Welcome to our Five on Five. We're pleased to be joined by Dateline producer Shane Bishop. Shane, good to see you again. How are you? Nice to see you. Chris. So, so you're a Medford resident. Before we get all uh, how you ended up here, uh, how long has Dateline been in the air? And how long have you been a part of that program? I think Dateline. This is our 24th season, and I've been there 22 coming up. Wow, that's pretty so. exciting. Getting a lot's changed, I imagine, over the last two decades. Well, I mean, the, the same thing that uh, appeals to everybody is the storytelling that we that we do so well. I think that's why people watch us and and uh, cover breaking news and things like that, although we do less and less of that now. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what, what uh, I mean, you, it's constant in-depth coverage for you. I mean, you travel, well, I don't know if it's constant, but you travel all the time across the country telling these stories. You work, these are really long-form stories, and some of them involve murder and, and some negative things. Has that ever affected you in, in your personal life? I don't think so. I mean, I'm, I'm a reporter like you. You kind of put up the wall and do your job. I think I've been at every... Uh, I started in uh, World Trade Center bombing in 93. I've been to, uh, you know, Oklahoma City, Columbine, 9-11, uh, uh, Katrina, yeah. every tornado, a lot of shootings. UCC. Yeah, I was just up in Roseburg, although mm -hmm. we didn't do a show on it. But yeah, I've been to all those. And then in between, you work on the two or three or four stories a year that you can actually finish. Yeah. Murder mysteries. <laughs> yeah. It's, how many producers does Dateline have then? If, if people like you are constantly working on stories and, I mean, you guys. 30? So, yeah, there's 30, a lot. 30, 35, somewhere like that. There's, yeah. there's always some new stories obviously happening. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so tell people a little bit about what it's like to work in local news and, and work your way all the way to <laughs> a show like Dateline. Well, I grew up in Montana and I started in a small market, Missoula, Montana, and I worked my way to Altoona, Pennsylvania, Harrisburg, uh, Philadelphia, and then New York in local news. And in local news in New York, I met a young man named Brian Williams, whom nobody nobody had ever heard of him at that time. <laughs> and uh, he he got over to NBC, and I said, "Hey, buddy, remember me?" And you know, got Good me some, know. got me some interviews, and I've been there since 1994. And so and so, why Medford? What you relocated uh, to Southern Oregon? Why what brought you here? Well, I had the opportunity to move out of New York uh, after 9/11. Um, I'd always wanted to move back out west. Montana's way too cold for me. I grew up about. 60 miles from the Canadian border. I had mm. no desire to move back to the land of 45 below. So I thought this was a great place. I'd, I'd always heard growing up in Montana of this very warm kind of uh, banana belt spot on the Oregon-California border. And I just kind of threw a dart, a dart at the map and ended up here. Very, very, cool. very happy. Yeah, very nice. All right, cool. We're going to take a quick break. We'll have much more in a moment. Stay with us. Welcome back to our Five on Five. Again, we're here with Dateline producer Shane Bishop, a local Southern Oregon Medford resident. And Shane, you've been working for two plus decades on Dateline as a producer. What's your favorite story you've told? Well, I think the favorite story uh, happened about a month ago. A guy walked out of prison in Montana after 32 years, and Keith Morrison and I have been working on his story for 10 years. Wow. Uh, we've done multiple hours on it. We found new witnesses. We worked with a group called Centurion Ministries to find new witnesses. The guy got a new trial. Um, he's been in and out a couple times. The state Supreme Court put him back in. Uh, they changed a law in Montana because of, well, not exactly our story, but because okay. of this case. And uh, the governor just granted him clemency in November. So he's That was the, a murder? It was a murder was from 30 Washington. some years ago in wow. Montana. False confession case. Okay. And mm -hmm. so when, when you, it sounds like we're talking about, it, it sounds like you're pitching stories to the home office, for lack of a better word, and right. you live you know, here on the West Coast. So if you work on a story for 10 years like that, how, is it, I mean, are you doing multiple stories oh, on yeah. it? Or are you just working and constantly waiting for that time? Any, any moment in time I'm working at, uh, for, uh, I'm working on five to eight stories, probably, and some of them I'm just keeping track of. I'm talking to cops mm -hmm. for years and years, you know, waiting for the break in the case or waiting for something to happen or doing some investigating on our own. In the, in the meantime, I'm working on the murder mysteries with Keith. Okay. So it's just a lot, keeping a few balls in the air. Yeah, right. certainly. All right. And so what, what's your next story? What, what can we look for in the future? Uh, January 8th, I believe, uh, a two-hour dateline with Keith Morrison in Montana about a veterinarian who was killed out in the middle of nowhere in 1996. And they finally made an arrest and took the man to trial. And I won't tell you how it ends. <laughs> <laughs> no, you got to be a great writer, right? you got to be able to tease. That's right. Okay, so yeah. in, in, I'm leading you to the writing questions. Mm -hmm. What is... What is the most transferable skill, the, the most important you think people should work on if they want to work their way up in the television business or, or really any business? Well, for me, it's always been writing. I'm, I'm, I was trained as a writer in Montana by a very a good professor who gave me some confidence, and I think I got every job I've ever had because I, because I can write. And hmm. uh, I always tell my kids, you know, if you write, you can do anything. If, if, you, if you can tell a story in a coherent way, um, that transfers to any line of work. If you're a lawyer, you tell the best story to the jury, you're going to win your case. If you're a salesman, you tell the best story, the reason that you need to make the sale uh, to the guy, you know, writing the checks, um, mm -hmm. you're going to make it. So um, 
that's, that's been my key to success, and I don't think anybody who writes uh, uh, doesn't think that's the most important thing they can do. Very good. Good to see you, guys. Right. Nice Thanks to so see much. You, Look forward to January 8th. Thank you. All right. Stay with us. We'll be right back.